What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Harbor for Gamers. Today I'm going to be showing you how to undervolt a Ryzen 3000 or 5000 series CPU. Now if you didn't know, the basic principle of undervolting is to maintain the CPU and or GPU's performance while trying to actually decrease the CPU or GPU's temperature and you do this by lowering the voltage going to the CPU or GPU. Now again, we are looking at Ryzen CPUs in this video, but how you do this will be pretty similar across all platforms and motherboards. But depending on your motherboard's manufacturer and the tier of motherboard you have, the settings could be in different locations or may not even have some of these settings available. Now that's not to say that you can't still undervolt your CPU if your motherboard doesn't have some of these settings. It just means that it might be a bit more difficult to maintain the performance because how much you can actually undervolt a CPU does depend on the silicon of that CPU and the quality of your motherboard. Meaning having a good motherboard will make undervolting easier, but not necessarily better. I'll be undervolting my Ryzen 5 3600 on an MSI B550 Tomahawk. I will also be using the cooler that came with the CPU, that being the Wraith Stealth. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get into this. Now I recommend you start by loading into the UEFI of your motherboard and resetting the UEFI to default. Then you'll need to save and exit. I'm going to load right back into the UEFI and set my CPU fan speed to max and set the XMP profile. Save and exit once again. Loading into Windows now. There will be a few pieces of software that you really should have. Everything I'm using here is free or at least has a free version. There's hardware info. This is to monitor your system, primarily the effective clock, the CPU temperature, and the CPU voltage. Firmark, I'll be using this to stress the CPU so that we can actually check the speed and temperature of the CPU. Finally, I'll be using CPU-Z and Cinebench R20. These are to check the performance of the CPU. Now, if you want, you can also run some game-based tests like 3D Mark's Firestrike or Time Spy but I'm not gonna bother with that today. Either way, I will have links in the description to the software I'll be using. So now that we're in Windows, the thing we wanna do is run some benchmarks so that we can actually get a performance baseline. Starting with CPU-Z, under Bench, run the Bench CPU. Once it's done, you should make a note of these numbers by taking a picture with your phone or maybe simply just writing it down on a piece of paper. Closing CPU-Z and now opening Cinebench. I'm gonna be running only the multi-core test because the single core test takes way too long. And again, make note of the score when you're done. Yes, Cinebench does save the last test, but you should probably take a photo or write it down or do something else as well. Now closing Cinebench, and I'm gonna be opening up Firmark and Hardware Info 64. I'm gonna be clicking the CPU burn on Firmark. I'm gonna start off with the multi-core burn in. So I will be using all 12 cores of the 3600. Now, if you have an air cooler on your CPU, this should only take about five or six minutes. But if you have an AIO, this could take upwards of 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the size of your AIO. Once the CPU temperature stops increasing, make a note of the CPU temperature and the effective clock, then stop the burn-in. Now change the number of threads to one and click start. What we're looking for here is the single core effective clock frequency. It will likely be jumping around a little and it won't be a fixed number. You should only need to run this for like one to two minutes. So again, just make sure that you actually note the effective clock speed here. Now, again, if you do want to do some gaming testing, this is when you probably would want to do that, but I'm going to restart my system and load back into the UEFI. On this B550 Tomahawk, all the settings I need are going to be under the overclocking settings section. This may not be true for you. It all depends on your motherboard. I'm first going to set the OC mode to expert. 
Then I'm gonna scroll down to voltage settings. I'm gonna set CPU core voltage to offset mode. I'm going to leave the CPU core voltage on auto, but set the offset mode mark to negative. Now for the CPU offset voltage, this is the setting that we will be adjusting as we fine tune the undervolt. I'll start by adjusting it by only two steps. So that will be 0.025 volt. And again, we are in the negative here. I'll also be setting the CPU north bridge slash SOC voltage to override mode and actually setting the voltage to 1.0875 volt. We'll also need to set the CPU load line calibration. So this is the part that will likely change depending on your motherboard. I'll be going into the digit all power section here. Now we wanna go with the lowest load line here and that's because this will actually give us the largest droop which will actually help us maintain the single core performance. And for me, that's mode eight. Now if you can't find where your load line calibration settings are, you might be able to search within your UEFI to then simply find it. I know Gigabyte, MSI, and a few others do give you this function. Once you adjust your load line calibration, save and exit. Now we wanna load into Windows and rerun the benchmarks. If performance is about matching your baseline, that being plus minus one to 2%, Restart the system and load back into the UEFI and adjust the CPU offset voltage by another one or two steps. Like before, save and exit. Once you're back into Windows, again, rerun the benchmarks and you'll wanna continue this cycle until the system performance drops because unlike overclocking, the system typically doesn't just crash when the undervolt is too much. All that really happens is the system starts losing performance. Like there will be a point that it will just start crashing, but it will start losing performance first. So once the system performance starts dropping, you'll need to go back into the UEFI and adjust the CPU offset voltage to suit. And once you have the CPU offset voltage locked in, you'll want to rerun the temperature testing. I'll put together some graphs to kind of help you understand how this might all end up looking. For my system, the single core performance didn't drop. It was the multi-core performance that ended up dropping. And I'm only gonna be showing three voltage settings here because I don't want to go through everything. The default settings, uh, 0.075 volt offset, which was the ideal offset for my setup, and 0.125 volt offset. I'm using this low of an offset to kind of emphasize what happens when the offset is too much. And we see that the default and 0.075 volt have pretty much the same scores, but the 0.125 volt offset has a much lower multi-core score. Why is that? The CPU voltage is being choked just a little too much. Not so much that the system is crashing, but just enough so that the cores can't properly boost. Now for the frequencies and temperatures, with the default settings, the average effective core clock would boost up to 3950 and then slowly work its way down to 3875. And for the temperature, it jumped up to the mid 70s pretty quickly with it topping out at 80.5 Celsius. Then with the 0.075 volt offset, the average effective clock is pretty much the exact same as the default setting, but the temperature only jumped up to the high 60s with it topping out at 73.5 Celsius so a seven Celsius difference. Now with the 0.125 offset, the average effective clock was much lower than the default setting, but the temperature only topped out at 67.5 Celsius. So still quite a temperature drop. Now this is kind of bringing me to the whole thing of, in some situations, it might be worth losing that performance for the extra temperature drop, now, of course, this will depend on your situation and how you're wanting to use your system, but yeah, it could possibly be worth some people to actually undervolt to a point that it's losing performance. But it really does come down to your situation. Well, that's undervolting in a nutshell. nutshell that, that nutshell is a saying, right? Now, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments, or if you just wanna say I'm a dumbass and don't know what I'm talking about, leave that there too. But that is all that I have for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. Uh, I also have an HFG Discord server. There, It is completely free to join. I have a link down in the description to that. Maybe check out these videos here. They should be pretty much along the same lines of what you just watched. 
And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.